hello everyone and uh, my name is Paul and welcome back to Paul's Railroad. On uh, this episode uh, we're going to begin building our downtown scene. Um, I should not say the scene itself. Uh, I'm going to start printing and finishing the actual buildings for the downtown scene. All the buildings I'm going to have are going to be buildings of my own design. Uh, the, a lot of the buildings are going to be modeled after my own uh, hometowns, downtown area. Uh, it's, uh, the buildings are very noticeable to many small rural towns. Um, actually, um, this is the building that I've modeled. It's my first one for the downtown area. As you can see, it, it does look very familiar. There are many kit companies out there manufacturing buildings similar to this one. I, however, have only ever seen this particular design in a two-story building, and I wanted to—I wanted a three-story building, so that's why I started with this. This building itself, I printed on my uh, Creality resin printer. Uh, I wanted to see what that would turn out like. I have never actually printed a full building on my resin printer. Uh, the detail came out quite well on it. However, uh, I'm fairly new to resin printing still, so I have to uh, as a little bit of a learning curve especially when it comes to uh, where I place my support structures. As you can see, there's quite a bit of scarring on the back of the building. Um, that, I, of course, I do not like that. However, this building I printed on the Creality Ender 3 FDM printer. Um, that printer I've had for several years now is actually the third or second FDM printer that I've owned. Uh, I've been 3D printing for approximately five or six years now. Just got into designing heavily in the past uh, year. So, if you want to see me go from this to this, stay tuned. Hey everyone, we're down here at the workbench now. And through the magic of cinematography, you all have already seen what this building looks like finished. So let's get started on it. Um, in front of me here are the colors that I plan on using. I may not use every single color, but uh, these are the colors I'm going to be using for the brickwork. And uh, for this is going to be like a concrete work, columns, what, whatever, what have you. But uh, we're going to be using uh, burnt sienna, a yellow ochre. This is just a wine red. Any dark red will do. Uh, burnt Umber, a uh, Raw Sienna, the black I'm going to be using for a black wash, and uh, this Granite Gray, uh, this is the color I'm going to be using for all of the um, concrete work areas. Um, to get started, I'm going to first start off with the Raw Sienna. I'm going to, uh, as you've seen me do on other videos, I'm going to cut this 50-50 with isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to airbrush this entire model uh, with this raw sienna. Once that is dry, we'll come back and do some other techniques. So let's get started. All right, well, we're done with the airbrush, and our building is dry now. I, I cheated a little bit. I got a little hair dryer and, and dried it. Nice thing about uh, acrylics, at least the, the, the flat or matte color acrylics, they dry relatively quickly on their own. So uh, this is our base color. Hoping you can see it okay. Oh. Tearing things up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these four colors here, this uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, the wine red, and the burnt umber. We're going to put them on our palettes, just a, just a touch of each one. We're going to go through and just kind of mix them up a little bit. 
I don't want to mix completely as one solid color. Because now what we're going to do, let me move this to the side so it's out of the way. We're going to take a sponge. This is just a sponge I got. I believe I bought this at maybe Walmart or something in the car in the automotive section. Um, you can use uh, sponges used for made for cleaning off grout. You can get those at any of your big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot's, Walmart's, True Values if you have any of those. And now uh, what what we're gonna do? Now this is the first time I've ever tried this technique, so I hope it turns out. If not, you'll never see this video, and we'll move on. But I'm just gonna dab this in here. And I'm going to take almost all the paint off. I don't want to have any paint left on this sponge. We're going to come in and we're just going to start dabbing different spots. And always remember when you're doing a sponge technique, no matter what uh, you're doing this or something else, you always want to turn your sponge. You don't want to get that same pattern going. I don't know if you can all see that. Now I'm not going to go real, real heavy with this because I'm breaking things left and right tonight for some reason. But uh, more importantly is, uh, remember we're doing this in end scale and uh, a little bit goes a long ways. Okay, um, next step is we're going to take this uh, paint here in our palette, got the four colors that I've been using, and we're going to take this little, if I focus here, anyway, it's just a little itty bitty brush. And we're going to go in here and we're going to individually paint some of these bricks, not all of them, just some of them. How I like to do this is I like to start from the light colors, work my way up to the dark colors, only because I'm lazy and I don't want to clean my brush in between colors and it's nature and in nature things mix together so let's get started on doing this again you're not going to hit every brick and it doesn't have to be perfect Okay, folks, we have painted up all the little accessory pieces that I printed. I'm going to give you a close up of that air conditioning unit. Let's see if I can get her to focus. Come on. There we go. Um, paint job sucks a little bit, but you know, I'm going for an aged building. But uh, this is what it looks like. Kind of painted up. And then before we get started on that, gluing those onto the building. I also made up, I showed you the sign, and uh, I went into Adobe Illustrator, and I actually made up a sign. I mean, you can do that with, with, with probably anything. I mean, any word processing program could probably do this, or, you know, um, Photoshop. I just happened to have Illustrator up, and so I used it. So we're going to get that glued in to here first. Then we'll start attaching things to the building. All right, next up, we're going to do something I've never done before. I've seen this done a bunch of times on uh, other YouTube channels. Um, again, these are just, sorry, these are just uh, images I found on the internet. This is a Lionel train ad and a Coca-Cola ad. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, sandpaper uh, heck, I don't even know what grit this is. I think this is, oh, I don't know, maybe 100 grit. And I'm going to flip these over. 
I must sand very carefully the back of these to become very, very thin, almost where you can see through to the other side. And what we're going to do is I made up a mixture of 50% Elmer's glue, 50% water, close to it. I didn't measure it, just eyeballed it. And once I get these sanded down, I'm going to flip them over and, and saturate the backs of them with the glue. And uh, we're going to glue them on the side of the buildings. Before I do all that, I wanted to make sure that I use some uh, masking tape and give me some registration marks so I get it in square. These are going to be so thin, I am certain it's going to be a one-shot deal putting these down. I do believe if we try to move them, especially on a textured surface like that, I'm going to end up tearing them. So just to give you a little example, I'm just going to take the sandpaper and it's going to start. It doesn't take too long to get through this paper. And it's probably a good idea to print off multiple copies because I did practice this off camera a little bit ago and uh, I did tear through the first couple that I did because I was a little too aggressive. But uh, let me get these sanded through. I'm going to be doing that to both of them. Um, come back, I will put them on. Well, you know, I guess I didn't explain to you why exactly I am sanding the back of these. Some of you may have guessed. But uh, what we're going to attempt to do here is this building has a brick texture on it. And by thinning this paper out, and again, this uh, is just uh, plain old printer paper that you can get anywhere. But by thinning this out and soaking it down with this mixture of water and glue, I am hoping that the image will suck into the mortar joints of this brick and give it the illusion of being a, a painted on image and not just a sign that was hung. So, I got them both done here. Oh, and another thing, a little, little, little afterthought here. When I was doing this, um, when you are sanding, always try to hold it very flat on one side. Take your paper and try to do the whole piece of one shot straight across. And always make sure you're pulling opposite directions. Because it doesn't take much to tear this, especially when it starts to get very, very thin. So, be very careful. So, okay, let me zoom out here so we can get an overview of everything that's going on. So all I'm going to do here, I think I just, a little piece of uh, tin foil here. We're going to start with this one. It's the Lionel one. I'm going to flip it over. Uh, got a little paintbrush I use. Help spread it. Shake this up real good. Again, all we're going to do, a little bit goes a long way, and dab it on there. Don't be afraid to get glue on your fingers, because it's going to happen. Just get that all covered on at least the back side. I know which way I had it. So we'll come up from the opposite side here with my tweezers. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a one shot deal, so try to get her all lined up the best you can before you lay it down. Okay. I don't want to rub it too much, I'm afraid I'll make that ink smear. So what I'm going to do is just take a paper towel here and just blot off the excess. I'm immediately going to remove this tape. Yeah, it might be a little crooked, but I think we're okay. I mean, it is what it is. I'm going to come back through with this paintbrush, a little bit of glue on it. Just get these edges. Just kind of tamp them down. Let the bristles push them down a little bit. Hey, guys. Well, I've got them on, 
they are not dry yet and uh, I was correct this is a one-shot deal I had this one uh, so paper thin <laughs> funny how huh? paper thin I had it so thin and I put it down the first time I did not like it and I tried to reposition it this is number two uh, it just totally disintegrated in my fingers and uh, as I uh, figured what happened once you get this wet with the glue, you start touching it, you're going to start losing some of the ink. I noticed even in the little, little palette I have with glue on it, I saw some of the yellows and reds in that glue on that palette and on the paper towel I was using to dab it. So less is more big time when it comes to this. Get it on. Don't rub it with your fingers. Just get it on. Get it positioned. Dab it a few times with paper towel to get the excess glue off, especially around your edges so it doesn't uh, dry off shiny and let it dry. Now I'm not going to be able to do any kind of weathering until these are completely dry of course. But what we are going to do is we will uh, glue on the little greebleys or whatever you want to call it, the air conditioner unit. And I don't know if you can even see this, but this is just a little uh, vent that's going to go on the side of the building. And of course uh, this is a part of an electrical meter. All right, time to get down to the weathering. Uh, what I'll be using is just a normal pastel chalks and different brushes. One's got a real short bristles on it. I cut those off, make them really short and stiff, and some different ones, different sizes to do any feathering or anything I may need to do. Whenever you are weathering, you know, you, you always want to try to make things look natural. So you always want to go in the direction that it would naturally fall. So on buildings, things fall down because of rain for the most part. Um, again, it doesn't take much. I'm going to start out with this uh, orangey red color. It's almost a rusty color. I'm going to hit spots like down here where this. The conditioning unit is sitting. Kind of a little bit of a more of an orange. You may not see it at first, but you gotta build up layers. Kind of a little grimy black here. All right, weathering is done-ish for now. We may always go back and, and add to it eventually when we get um, more things added to it and even if we get it on the table and mixed in with other buildings. I don't wanna to go too heavily. You can see on this side, I went and got some uh, yellow pastels and came down through here as to emulate maybe the paint was washing off over years of use being on the building. And again, just went around the edges with some darker pastels to give it kind of the worn look. A little bit of shadows along the corners of the windows where water would run down. And it's very subtle, but these are very small buildings, so you don't want to overdo it. And the front I did not do as much as the sides or the back, because in my mind, if you are a business owner, you know, you, you're going to, you're going to, you know, if you take care of your building, you're going to do more of the front. That's what people are going to see. They're not going to normally see too much of the sides or the backs. This is what's going to be on the main street. So here we are. Just some pastel chalks and a couple little brushes. This took me maybe, maybe 10 minutes. Go through and did this, do this. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a little bit of rust streaks here and there. Next up, we're going to uh, cut uh, the material for the windows. I just use uh, acetate for that. You can buy that at pretty much any hobby store. So uh, let's continue on. All right, <clears throat> it's time to install some windows. Again, what I use for my windows is just acetate, which, uh, like I said, you can buy it 
most hobby stores. It's uh, used for making, you know, template stencils, etc. Speaking of stencils, what I do first is before I start trying to cut into the acetate and fight with that, because it's hard to see, it's so you know so clear. Is I just use a regular piece of paper. And I use that to make a stencil, and of course then I cut out the acetate using the stencil from the paper. What we're going to be using today to attach it is some of this uh, testers uh, it's for clear parts. Tester cement for clear parts. Uh, you've seen me use this before if you watch me build the um, engine house. How I like to apply this is I'll put a little dab on a scrap piece of paper and I'll use probably this paper clip or something like that to put it on the around the walls inside the building. I very rarely will you ever see me go, go directly from a bottle. It's just it's way too much. That's how messes get made. And it's how little little trick. Any modeler who is worth their weight in gold is not going to be squirting model paint right out of a bottle. Um, you did that when you was a kid, and you get frustrated when you get model glue everywhere. Model glue everywhere, right? Well, that's why we don't do that anymore. So, I'm going to start with side walls. I'll just show you how I do one and then we'll I'll finish them up off camera that way you're not just sitting around there watching me glue things up pretty straightforward then I put some glue down like I said I just this stuff sticks pretty good. Doesn't take too doesn't take too much. But the nice thing about using this glue as opposed to like super glue is if you do get some on your clear parts, it dries clear. Which I think I might sacrifice an old beat up brush for this. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot better. Okay. And you kind of like, you know, very carefully stick her in here where you want. Press it down. There you go. You got some instant windows. Pretty simple, pretty quick. Get the other ones done and we'll come back and I'll show you what I got planned. Alright. All the acetate is in the windows. Now we could call it finished as far as the building goes. Move on to the roof. But I'm going to try something a little different today. Something I've never done before. Um, the templates. That I cut out for the acetate. I cut them up in little strips. 
and I'm gonna see if we can make little window blinds for some of these windows. And in the front window, something we're gonna try, which I hope works. I don't even know if you can even see this, but uh, I print out a bunch of little antique ads, kind of like I did for the signs on the side of the building. And we're gonna try gluing those in as if they're you know storefront advertisements for the toy store. So, let's, you know what, let's start with the ads. Let's do the hard ones first, right? See how that goes. Let's see here, how am I going to have to hold this? Okay. What I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to use this tester's glue for the clear. Now, as far as gluing the acetate in, I will be honest, I had to go back and, and actually use super glue. That clear just it did not seem to want to hold to the plastic that well. But I mean it held to the acetate just fine, but not to the building. I, same process though, so I used a paintbrush and I painted on the uh super glue instead of the tester's clear glue. But this this I had to use this for these or it definitely will not work because it has to dry completely clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this a little bit on here. I don't want to flood this. Just using the paper clip here. Just get a little bit on this paper. Okay. I'm going to try to do this on camera, but I may have to take it off. We'll see. What do you know? There's an ad for a rocket ship. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Let's throw a couple more in there. Think I should put one more in there to balance everything out? Nah, heck with it. Let's see if it'll be. It's a be a little different. Okay. Now let's try doing the window blinds. Alright, now I'm not putting any window blinds in the front window because you've got those green things that kind of look like window blinds. Plus, I just, you know, it's from the store. I want it wide open so you can see in. There they are on the side. In the back. On the other side. Now, yeah, there's none on the bottoms either. Again, this is at your main store level. I wouldn't think that you would have blinds down on that level. But as far as the building itself goes, I think it is fairly complete. I need to finish the roof, so... We'll get on to the roof next. On to the roof. This is the final part of this build. And we're going to do a little something special with this roof. Um, it is just uh, part of the 3D print. I designed the roof for this to put on here. I just threw a coat of black paint on here. It doesn't matter if it's sloppy or not because we're going to cover that. First thing we're going to do, however, is we're going to take our building we're going to set our roof on here and uh, I made this little you know rooftop shed to get on the roof we're going to put that on here where we want it and actually excuse my reach we're going to glue that down before we finish the roof. We're going to put a tar paper roof on this. Tar paper roof. I need to learn how to use my words better, don't I? I want to glue this to the plastic and not to the paper, so that's why we're going to glue this down first.
with this little quick set. Okay. While that is off, brushed off that quick set. Actually, set that out. I like that stuff, but boy, I wish I could figure out a way to make a sudden such a big spray pattern. Don't need it that much. So what we're going to use for the tar paper. This is just a plain black piece of construction paper. You can zoom out here so you can see it better. And all I did was I took some, uh, heck I don't know, I think it was maybe this color here, this gray paint, loaded in my airbrush and I just gave a good dusting over the top of it. So I don't want it to be completely black, this kind of does our, a little bit of our weathering for us. And now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take a piece of sandpaper and I'm just going to start scuffing this up to bring back some of this, some of the black. That little roof. Okay, tar paper, if my memory serves me, comes in three foot widths. Um, what I have here as a scale ruler. If, you, if you're going to get into model railroading and build a lot of things yourself, you should pick one of these up. But the Amazon, they're relatively inexpensive. And it's got N scale on this side. And it's got your O scale and your HO scale on the other side. Plus it's got uh, 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 64 here. And over here it's got your millimeters. And it's got all kinds of, all kinds of good information on it. I primarily use, of course, just the N scale right now. So what I'm going to do there's my there it is. I'll take my exacto blade. Zoom in here. An end scale ruler. Um, if you can see, but it's marked every five feet. So come up here. Set on zero. I go one, two, three. We'll cut. Go to the other side. Do the same thing. Okay, I don't ever use this ruler to cut against or mark against. I don't want to get it really. So it's always kind of another ruler on hand here. I'll line it up. Let's cut. Okay, well, there's our first strip of toilet paper. Okay, on to the roof. I did forget, however, to also glue on the chimney. So that's on now, all set up. All I did is I took my little strips that I cut up, and I cut them even smaller. And we're just going to use some uh, plain old Elmer's glue to glue them on. What I plan on doing here is I'm going to cut these in half again. I want it to be kind of patchwork looking. So I get some short ones. Okay. There's no rhyme, no reason, no right, no wrong. All we're going to do is have some fun. And make a mess.
I keep all of these. These are from printing these buildings. These are the rafts I put them on. Because they always come in handy for something. Right now they're going to come in handy for keeping my workbench from getting covered in glue. So, I'm just going to start with a row. Just a tad peep, so I'm going to overlap it just a little bit. These aren't shingles, they're not going to overlap like you would shingles. They, they pretty much want to butt up against each other. I'm only overlapping the edges, that way I don't have any roof showing through. All right, we're going to let the glue dry real well before we even attempt to trim it. That way we don't pull anything up. And uh, we'll be back soon. Let's dry and get her trimmed and see what she looks like. And if we can trim it now, I think we'll just try it with the scissors here. Okay. Yeah. See what she looks like sitting on there. I don't know about you, but I definitely like that. Oh, and I figured out what to use for my wire drop. Uh, this was actually laying on my desk. It was a uh, a wire tie from a, some kind of electronics, a little, a little round black. Well, here it is. This is what it was, just a wire tie. So I just uh, slapped some paint on it and glued it on. One more little piece to glue on here, and I think we will call this model done. Let's put you right here. All right. Right, that's Trains and Toys. It's officially open for business. Again, as always, uh, thank you for spending your time with me and watching this video and following along. I hope you like what you saw. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, don't forget to tap that bell icon as well. That will give you any notifications of uh, when I upload. Um, I don't upload a whole lot, so you're not going to get a bunch of notifications from me, which is, I mean, a good thing if you don't want to be bothered by that stuff, because I know I don't. But um, 
again, thanks for watching. Thanks for spending your time. And we'll see you next time.